couple days ago, I saw this tweet from Extreme Pen Testing for the best search engines for pen testers and security professionals. And I figured, let's just see how true this is and dig into it. In this episode, we're going through the top 10 best search engines for pen testers and security professionals. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. So I love these top 10 lists. I love tools, especially, you know, SaaS based products that we can all bookmark and have at our disposal and use the right tool for the right job. Now, when I saw this uh, top 10 tweet, I was like, yes, like, let's absolutely do that. So we're going to step through all of these. I'm going to give you my uh, professional opinion. Now, I know that this is for pen testing, but I'm, I'm not a pen tester, but I do do, you know, socks type stuff, incident response stuff. And as I went through these, I definitely saw some value. Uh, some of them I didn't really find any value. And I'll tell you why. I'd be interested in the comments if you've used these tools and what in what capacity. So let's get right into it and have some fun. So the very the first one we're going to look at is Shodan. Now, Shodan is one that everybody um, knows about and absolutely uh, loves. It's kind of the OG one. Shodan, um, you can register for a free account. Uh, they do have different services. Yes. You can see here Shodan, we've put in org.google and they've come up with all, you know, 20 million different results. Um, we can also see QNAP. If you guys remember QNAP, uh, the network storage device thing is uh, known to have a lot of vulnerabilities right now. You can uh, filter on port 8080 and you could see uh, all these different results. These are actually internet facing IP addresses of QNAP devices. And you can see on the left, what's really nice that Shodan does is they break it out by region, by organization. And then what you may care about in this instance, if you're a pen tester is operating system, because you can, you know, find like, okay, version 433 and below had this vulnerability. What is it? And then if it is in scope of your target environment, you can you know, uh, leverage that to get a foothold in the organization. Uh, Shodan does provide a lot of, uh, you know, the front end is like, you know, search query kind of Google like thing, but they also have APIs, uh, which is pretty powerful. So you can actually uh, query in and be able to pull information back. There's a lot of information as far as the syntax goes and all that stuff. So if you don't know about Shodan already, it's definitely worth taking a look at and having some fun. Um, one, one particular query that I always enjoy is looking for um, remote desktop, Microsoft remote desktop open to the internet. And you could see all these different active um, organizations with their remote desktop. Strongly encourage you not to, you know, access, like you can click on this and it'll give you some information, more information on that particular host, right? And then if you want, you can obviously go right to this IP, put it in your web browser or you know, in this case, RDP to it. I don't encourage you to do that, that like you're beginning to cross a boundary legally um, unless you have that permission. Okay, so that is Shodan. Next on our list is census.io. Now census.io um, is pretty cool. Um, they, it's one of those ones where they have a product offering and then they have like a free model so people can use it. But if they want to like uh, up their game for their organization, they can take advantage of it. Um, they do offer kind of a um, threat attack surface. So basically census is like showed in them that they kind of cover the whole internet and they have a lot of uh, information and enriched data around what devices look like operating systems, IPs, uh, exposure and stuff like that. You do have to create an account and you can like do that for free. And you could see here, I've done a similar query where I've looked for QNAP and um, you know, port 8080 and found those services. Again, very similar to Shodan, where you have the locations and the services. Um, they don't do the actual uh, operating system, but there is a lot of telemetry and information in here. Again, you can just click on the IP and get um, more information about, you know, what, like, what is that IP on the internet? How's it responding? What's it looking like? What's it doing? Um, so, you know, very valuable. The way I would use this and the way I would use Shodan as a, you know, a, as a defender is your organization's external IP address. You can uh, put that in and see what Shodan and Census see because that's what the internet sees. And you can identify if you have like some listening services that you shouldn't like say, you know, an engineer like Carl in engineering has turned on remote desktop because he, he wants to remote in on the weekends. Uh, but that obviously uh, introduces a huge risk for your organization. 
So you can find, you can use tools like this to find that. The next one that we're going to cover is hunter.io. Now hunter.io is very specific in that it finds email addresses of organizations. So this is much more geared for your penetration tester, your ethical hacker, uh, offensive security professional. This was featured in uh, Heath Adams' uh, Practical Ethical Hacking course as one of the tools that he uses. Uh, basically, if you're going to you know, do recon and socially engineer a, a person at an organization, or say you're trying to like, if you're being really persistent and you want to email the CISO at a company to ask for a job, how do you get their email address? Well, hunter.io can help you. So let's just put in, for example, you know, expel.io, right? So that's an example. And you could see it tells you right here, the most common pattern is first.last name at expel. They have several examples here. So then you could use other tools like LinkedIn to find the CISO at expel.io. You could then say his name was, you know, Gerald, Gerald Osher, right? So then you could do Gerald.Osher at expel.io and fire off an email and see what happens, right? Or if you're doing uh, penetration testing, you can, you know, um, find someone who's like in accounting or an administrative assistant or whoever sales at the organization and email them with like a malicious document or a malicious link to, to get a foothold, get some credentials. I do want to point out really quickly that hunter.io has a Chrome extension, which is pretty sweet. That will basically tell you like whatever site you're on and give you the uh, email. So like we're on hunter.io's website right now and you can see it's pulling up all that information. Again, like it showed in just as an example. Um, oh, reach daily limit. So they do put a threshold on that. I, I was doing some testing earlier, so I don't know how what your daily limit is, but that <laughs> that would make me actually want to uninstall this extension since uh, I'm not a professional pen tester and I wouldn't, you know, if I was, I would pay for that service. Next I, uh, uh, option on the list is zoomi.org. Now zoomi is actually pretty awesome. We covered this in our top 25 OSINT video. Um, again, as a Offensive security person, you can type in, you know, whatever you want. Um, automated tank gauge, this sounds like an industrial control system. Um, and you can see port 10,001, and it'll find that stuff. Again, it's got that vibe, that feel for um, Shodan or Census, but there's really great information here. Um, I like Zoomai. I always forget about it um, if I'm being completely transparent, but I do like it. I think it, I think it's useful. Um, again, as a defender, if I found some weird IP, like, um, uh, some, some, somebody in my organization, some system is talking to an IP, I might throw it in here to see what it is or where it goes, maybe get some more information in it. Uh, or if I'm seeing, you know, um, I guess like a weird URL or, you know, some, something weird. It just, it just helps give you context and information. Again, this tool is wonderful for offensive security people to do the uh, reconnaissance phase of their engagement. Now the next one is Wiggle. And this is going to be the first one where we encounter uh, something that I don't, I didn't find particularly useful. So as far as I can tell, Wiggle is a community driven, like war drive, Bluetooth war drive, wireless war drive um, map of the world, right? So people, communities get together and they map out wireless networks. You can see you can search by SSID, uh, by um, the BSSID lat long. You can put in your address and find um, the networks. I did not understand the value of this. So we're looking at San Francisco, California, right? And all these little nodes uh, obviously some density, but there's nothing to click on. There's nothing you can do. It doesn't tell me what the network is. It, so, I mean, personally, I didn't find any value in this. If you, maybe I'm using it incorrectly. I mean, there was some interesting information in here. If you're doing research on like the adoption of wireless tech technology or like what levels of encryption people are using, but for the most part, I didn't really see any value in uh, this this site. So sorry, wiggle.net. Uh, but if you if you do use this and find value, please drop it in the comments and tell me what I'm missing here. Now, the next one on the list is public www.com. That's this guy right here. Um, 
This one is interesting. Um, this one searches source code across the internet and allows you to find signatures and stuff like that. Now this this one I did not see uh, a use case for, um, I guess the blue side of the house. Maybe you could try to find your own organization and see if you're accidentally uh, leaking data or exposing some some um, interesting information like API keys or something like that uh, in code. But I didn't really see any value from a offensive security perspective, I did see value in um, being able to find, like, say, like, say you're like looking for, you know, you have a vulnerability that you can exploit on, you know, whatever this angular JavaScript. So you can find sites that have it. The, the problem with this for me is when you're doing pen testing, you're not just randomly trying to find a vulnerable target. You're literally operating within a scope um, and then you want to find vulnerabilities within that scope. So it, it you know, your, your mileage may vary. I find it interesting. Um, the whole, this whole search engine, it's pretty cool. It, the interface is, uh, pretty simple, but they do provide some examples and stuff like that. That is, that is nice. So again, I, I don't think I'm not going to bookmark this one. I don't particularly find value in it myself. Uh, but if, if, you know, there's something here that you could use. Definitely check it out. The next one is PulseDive.com. Now, I have connected with Grace at PulseDive. Uh, so the people I have met there are pretty good. I do like the dark mode. Um, I think that that's cool. And I did a little bit of playing around with this. I think it's nice. I think it it, it is an enriching, um, you know, threat intelligence platform, essentially. And you can see, just as an example, I've thrown in... I went to... Um, I went to Josh Strohshine's uh, Twitter account. He's a malware analyst, very good stuff. And I dropped in, um, you could see I dropped in what he put, which was HXXP. And then he actually had uh, brackets around the period. So basically you couldn't accidentally go to this. And Pulse Dive natively transitioned it to HTTP and removed the brackets and stuff. So I appreciated that. Uh, they did target it as high risk. Uh, it looks like they only did that because it was direct to IP URL not um, because they had actually identified it as a malicious uh, target. But at the end of the day, this is, you know, this is a cool, useful site to be able to quickly do some, some recon um, from a blue side, right? Like what is this site? What is this URL? What is, what is in the email that my end user just clicked on? Right. And we can um, get some more information um, about that. So this is all about this particular target. The nice thing is too, you can copy, easily uh, the summary. So if you're, if you um, have a ticketing system like the hive or, you know, whatever ticketing system you might use in your security operations, you can quickly copy and paste right there into the, uh, the ticket. And, you know, looks like they have integrations on the pro version. So if you are doing this professionally, maybe you drop a couple bucks and uh, get the integrations. Uh, it does not say hive integration, but there might be a integration for ticketing systems and stuff like that. So it's pretty sweet. Um, definitely, definitely worth checking out. I would bookmark Pulse Dive. I find it very cool and very useful. Plus, they have a community stream, um, like you know, for practitioners to continue to refine their own skills and, and communicate with other practitioners. So that was a nice little feature. The next one on our list is Intel XIO. Now, this one was actually on the list, but uh, just recently on Simply Cyber, the live stream. Mike Jones, the haunted hacker, said that this is the platform that he likes to use. He works at an MSSP, uh, so he works in the security operations space, and this this is the tool he uses for threat intelligence. So again, you get a weird URL in an email, you get a weird IP on your network or something, or not on your network, but you know your network's talking to a weird IP or something like that. Uh, you can drop it in here and check it out. I've put a couple. Um, Oh, yeah, like I didn't really understand how to fully use it. Uh, but when you click on the about, they have some examples. So essentially what I'm gathering from Intel X is that it's literally an open source intelligence aggregator. So very, very powerful, very, very useful. Here's some pictures from North Korea, if that's, you know, your speed. Uh, also, we've got like, let's see, I don't want to do anything political. Um Okay, so it's all like North Korea and political stuff. So um, I'm not going to click in any of those, but you get it. Uh, another really cool feature that I thought um, for um, Intel XIO uh, was this. So if you on the third party search, you click on the left. This is under tools, by the way. You could see that you could type in an email 
here. And then you can use all of these open source platforms uh, to query at one time. So think of this as like not just an aggregator, but like um, an, an abstraction up that allows you not to have to go to all these different sites in order to query the same thing. Again, here here you see Shodens here, Zoomai, Census. So three of the tools that we've already talked about in this video, you could do all from here. So that's it's not just powerful, but it's a time saver, which to me is uh, very, very valuable, right? Sometimes it's it's you're trying to move quickly because there is a threat that's actually being um, in your environment or being realized. And sometimes you just don't want to waste a lot of time. If you could do it all at one spot, why wouldn't you? Okay. The next one, getting to the near the end of the list, is Repossify. Um, I did not, I was unable to use Repossify. So they look like they're a, a commercial, you know, enterprise grade solution. You know, they have the book of demo here, sign in. There's no kind of free, I didn't see anything free. I didn't see like a search engine. Most of these tools, like there's like a search bar right as soon as you land. Um, again, it looks like it's an interesting tool. It's, you know, just a different uh, vibe of scouring the internet and giving you some intelligence around what your IP, um, your external facing IP uh, infrastructure looks like and allows you to find unknown internet facing assets like Carl's RDP system, <laughs> right? Okay, so that, that one we can't spend a lot of time. The final one is viz.graynoise.io. Now, viz.graynoise.io um, looks like it's designed for blue team security analysts. I hadn't heard of it before. Uh, I did sign up. It took just a minute and that was pretty cool. Um, and what they uh, do is, so a lot of these open source intelligent tools like Shodan and Census and Zoomai and stuff, you got to think they're like, they're scanning the internet all the time, all the time, right? So you hit a public IP, you query it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Right? So if your network infrastructure that's externally facing is going to be get hit by these scanners all the time. So you've got all this noise, right, on your network that you don't, you have to investigate and you can have alert triage uh, fatigue and your your team could be like wasting cycles on something that's not a big deal. So the, the what Gray Noise is talking about here is that they help kind of distinguish what is um, good traffic and remove it that way. Like that's the whole point of calling it Gray Noise. They remove what is like benign traffic so you can focus on um, malicious or concerning traffic, right? So uh, I don't know what their gray noise query language is. So I didn't find this tool approachable, um, honestly, but it looks cool. I like the I like the look and feel of the site. And just to pull up a couple examples um, for today, you can see they've got these results. And then here, this is malicious. And, and, and my guess is that you you use this tool based on information you're seeing uh, hitting your network to determine if it is malicious stuff hitting your network versus, um, you know, benign traffic. So you could see they've categorized it as benign, malicious. We'll look at some malicious. For me, I'm just a voyeur, like kind of looking around here. I'm, I, I'm not using this particularly uh, for security operations traffic, uh, but it is interesting. Okay. I feel like you'd have to have a dedicated Security operations engineer, uh, if you were going to try to take advantage of this, but it's certainly, certainly cool. So just to recap, uh, all of these um, solutions are pretty awesome. Uh, the ones that I would probably use most often are Shodan, uh, which I do use. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention with Shodan really quick too, is that they have this monitor feature um, that you can take advantage of, right? It's right here on the top. And I think for like 50 bucks a month, I don't want to click on it now because I actually have it configured for my organization, but for like 50 bucks a month, you can, um, or 50 bucks a year, you can put in your external network infrastructure and they will monitor it for you and tell you when something comes on uh, online that's in your network space or there's a you know vulnerable protocol or vulnerable service or something like that. So nice little feature. Um, so I use Shodan Census. Uh, I, I wish I used Zoomai more often. I'm going to try to use Pulse Dive. Uh, Wiggle, uh, Repossify, I didn't see a lot of value in those personally. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. Let me just show you the list one more time so you guys um, have that. Here's the list, right, of the, those 10 search engines. 
Uh, I hope you uh, find some of these valuable. Check them out yourself. Give them a shot. They're all free, except for Repostify, as far as I can tell. Okay, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Got some value. If you did, um, you know, share it with a friend. All right, until next time, stay secure.